in today's tutorial i'll be taking you through how i go through my images when i'm trying to push process them in capture one hey guys it's a new video here on Joey that if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to my channel and turn on that notification button like right there what's happening on your screen right now to receive every bit of new videos information whenever i drop them here on my youtube channel So first things first, let's just get right to what we have to do for this video. I normally use sessions in Capture One. So I create them by tapping this new session. I type the name of the session. I want the folder to be renamed to, right? So let's say Capture. One. And this Capture One folder will be saved at this particular location which is in my pictures tab on my computer i'm using a mac hey, sorry i'm using a windows laptop now so for mac i really don't know but you would have to go look for it but with windows it will be saved at your pictures tab so i already have my capture one session created which is this i don't like using catalogs i don't know why but i'm not really a fan of using catalogs but there's a reason why I use session because session I really don't have to import my images. All I have to do is just locate the images in the folder I copy them into, then I just go select, then I'm good to go. This is what happens. I don't really have to import them. I just have to go select where the raw files are, and it just opens without creating a whole lot of uh, um, how should I put this post previews and all that right so as you can see i have this image selected this is obviously the same image but in the continuing uh, um, part of this video i would probably explain why i did this so we'll go to I'm, I'm literally showing you guys what i do in capture one right so i normally don't use the capture folder the only time i use the capture folder is when i'm touching in the studio whereby i would want the client or the model i'm shooting to see how he or she is performing whilst i'm shooting it so it's right on display with my camera with uh, my usb cord in my camera on to, in my laptop touching to do whatever it is i have to do on my camera so whatever settings i think i do on the camera shows here right shows here and i shoot the model the client sees how he or she's performing then we are good to go it saves time where you have to do oh can i see the picture can i see the picture no nah, i can't let you see the picture just look on the laptop sorry yeah i don't really use the lens correction tab so just let's just get to the exposure tab first i like to do the exposure tabs before the color tab so with the exposure tab first things first let's go through the histogram the histogram looking at the histogram um there's less highlights than more shadows i hope you get it there are less highlights than shadows the shadows are more than the highlights as you can see on the histogram when you're when, when you're shooting outdoor you probably have the option to check how your histogram is looking like if you're shooting a well exposed image i think it will be well balanced in between like a well balanced and the shadows and in the highlights if it's over exposed it will be the histogram will be more to the highlights part of the histogram and if it's more shadowy like as you can see here so in between the highlights and the shadows is the midtones if you guys don't know i know you guys know but just for tutorial purposes so this is the midtone section the shadow section and the highlight section so all I'll do is go to my levels and push in more whites to compensate for the light. Right, so this is how it looks like. And in capture one, when I'm compensating for the whites, I normally bring down my brightness. So the more I send down the brightness, the more I add my white. So this is how I work around adding my whites to my images and a bit of contrast to them and i'm good to go so 
this i shot on a black background just to make the model stand out but i would love to add some shadows to this right so with capture one when you move your shadow slider to the right you add shadows but when you move your highlights slider to the right you take out the highlights in the images so i'll move it up a little bit so let's say five yeah five is okay for me so this is all i normally do in the exposure tab right levels i don't really touch the curve the clarity the vignetting nope well i want to explain something about the clarity there are methods natural punch neutral classic and with the structure photoshop has provided an option um the new updates on camera raw where you can add texture to your images so in capture one capture one already has that option where you add structure to your images which is more like adding texture to your images so if you do it well it comes out great if you don't it messes up your picture that being said let's go to the color tab at the color tab the very first thing i do is create a new field layer because obviously i am going to be working around the color editor panel so when you create a new field layer the whole image is masked so let me turn this off and show you the difference with a new empty layer i would have to paint on the side i want worked on right but with the new field layer everything i do on this particular layer gets affected by the whole image so you hold m on the keyboard to turn off your mask and let's get right to what we have to do so before we come to these layers let's turn them off and work on the background base characteristics i think i would have to explain this the icc profile for canon 6d this is how you get to see it right but canon doesn't really know how to match their this should i say color grade dark skin models dark melanin skin models so if, if you're looking at adding the colors yourself just go to the icc profile effect no color correction and this is what you get so by adding the colors yourself, you come to the color editor panel, go to the basic, you choose your reds, you move your reds in a little bit because the image was composed of reds and yellows. Now mostly in them, uh, um, every, every human skin has yellows, a bit of yellow and a bit of red in them. Sometimes magenta, sometimes blues, depending on how you shot it, the weather you shot it and under the conditions you shot them. So when I move the yellow slider up, this is what I get move the red slider up this is what i get let's do a quick before and after literally this is different from this comparing the skin so here's the thing i'll try moving um the levels do the same thing i did for the side use this increase this so this has the icc profiles no color correction with me adding the colors myself and this is what canon gives so i can say i would go for this because this is how i saw the model when i was shooting the model but with this this is what canon gives me and if i'm okay with this i probably might go with this and edit and go my way i can also choose this because this also sits right to my eye so let's reset this I have to deselect this and reset this. So back to this. We have to reset this too and reset the ICC profile. So that's it about the basic side of the color editor too. The white balance, you guys know how to work your way around white balance, your Kelvin and your things. So with the color balance too, I have two tabs for color balance. How to get these two? You have to go to window create floating to and you create the floating to you want to add to this so it's like we were talking about color balance so i tap on color balance and this makes it a third one so i can choose to move this to the shadows move this to the midtones and move this to the highlights 
so this will be the color balance for the shadow this will be the color balance for the mid-tone and this will be the color balance for the highlights obviously this too is basically a gradient too for the master graders i used to love grading but when i moved or when i switched to I'm shooting beauty and yeah, new the tutorial i i really minimized my grade in trying to keep uh, um, the natural feel with how i shot the picture and if if it was if, if it was a nude picture i'll keep the mood in which i shot the picture too i hope you guys understand me so this is how i set my i put this at master and i put this at the way and i color grade my image black and white i don't really use it so i'll just skip it so there were the color editor too now let's come back to this the layer one the new field layer right so with the color editor too let's go to okay let's see let's work on the advanced tab before with the advanced you would have to be working on the background right you tap on this then you select the color you want on the skin so i hold space double tap let's say i want to select this blue because so i want to enhance the blue in there when i tap on this view selected color range the only thing that's the only the only thing that's been selected is this hue of blue we selected and you can see it over the eyelashes right because that's what we're looking for so if i want to enhance that i can increase the saturation right decrease the saturation but when i increase the saturation you realize the hair is being affected and the eyes are being affected so i can choose to do this so let me delete this i can choose to do this on the new sword layer tap double tap select and i zoom in increase the saturation double tap out it still affects it because like i said everything that will be done on this new field layer will affect the whole image let's reset this and come to the empty layer let me erase what i did here i held e on the keyboard for the eraser to then i clean with this so i hold b on the keyboard and i'll try painting over the eyelash So I'll pick, hold M on the keyboard to disable the max. I'll pick the color picker to tap on this and increase the saturation. And this time, it's not affecting the eyes, nor the hair, but just the eyelids because what I just maxed the eyelashes, and we are good to go. I think this speaks great volume i can increase the lightness i can reduce the lightness change the hue to more blue more of purple but i think i like the more blue although you guys are not seeing it but this is what i was going for but it seems the blue mascara wasn't enough so i would have to enhance it here in post processing so this is what I'm looking for and with the color with the field layer I normally use this field layer when I'm trying to skin tone the images so skin toning I pick up the skin color picker this is one thing I think you guys should know about skin toning in capture one don't pick the side with the uh, um, brightest light no the side with the darkest side of the skin you pick in between so in between the highlights and the shadows are what the metals so in between um, this and that will be somewhere here right that is in between here and here in between this and that will be somewhere here in between this and that will be somewhere here 
right so it depends on how you would want to skin tone the image with the particular color of skin you want so looking at this i'll try to avoid the yellows i'll try to avoid too much light just be in between i think this is okay for me and with skin toning using the new field layer or using a color editor you should keep in mind where you would want to fix you, you understand so when you have your image and, and you're checking the makeup all over the skin and you're like okay i think this side is a bit off and i want this side to look like let's say this side when i'm done pushing in the hue all you do the very first thing is you push the hue to um it's far right the slider the hue slider to the far right to check if it if your skin toning um option is affecting the whole image then you push it back and try to match the skin toning having in mind the initial skin color you understand so i want this side to look like this side that's why i picked it this side so when i move the slider to the right because i have this zero zero option skin tone in my mind i'll picture that when i move to the right i get to realize okay this side is getting more to this color and the saturation slider works such that it tries to equalize whatever saturation here to this side to that side to this side and to any side of the image you understand that's how the saturation slider works lightness the same way tries to equalize the light fall off on the skin at any side of the skin to the other side if i move this to the right this is how it looks like it even starts the light you understand just leaving a bit of the highlights because obviously you can't cheat artificial lighting so you don't move it far to the right just keep it in between this is how i'll probably go about it if i was to be skin tone in this image so like i said whatever we've done here is affecting the whole image when i turn this off you can literally see the eyeshadow becoming a bit more orange than before right so when this is on after doing all this because i want to see how it will affect the whole image i'll right click on this layer and invert mask so whatever we just did has been inverted more like um the mask in photoshop so you paint white on a black mask to reveal what's going on but in this case i just have to paint my brush pick my brush sorry and paint over where i want the toning to be like so when i hold m on the keyboard you realize on the layer one where when i held m on the keyboard earlier the whole image was affected so this time around when I held M, I just had to paint the side because this is the side I wanted to look like this end. So when I toggle this on and off, you get to see the difference, right? So I think I would I would love to paint the side too because it, it looks a bit yellowish to me. I would want it to look just the same as the side because we picked the side. and i think god paint over skin hold them on the keyboard to see how it looks like so this is how it looks when i paint and i would want to smoothen this out so i right click on the layer and go to refine mask you understand then i push the refine marks to i think 91 no move it further to 163 and it evens and spreads out from and it smoothens the brush stroke i just did so let's do a quick before and after check the side and a bit of the side and over her skin if you don't really pay attention you really you really won't get to see the difference but me sitting behind my laptop i think i can see the difference 
so this is what i would have done using the color editor and the layer tab Good. so after this i was aiming at um a more close-up image and since i didn't get to do that right in camera i would want to crop this so this is where i think we use the lens side crop and instagram crops your image to 4x5 capture one gives you the option to use the 4x5 framing tap on the crop to move to the edge you get to see this arrow sign then you move in so this is how you wanted the cropping to be like Sorry, Control Z, and I'll hold the hand. And this is how I wanted the cropping to be like, like me shooting it in the camera. This is how I wanted it to be like. So if I couldn't get it in camera, and since I shot with a hundred mm, there are more details than necessary. I don't really have to fear about losing the details in the picture when I go to post process it. I could crop it in here. So I would want to do same for this picture. So keeping in mind 9.46 inches, 11.88 inches, I'll do the same thing to this picture. 9.46. Then we'll just try and position this. So let's see. So this is how I would have cropped the image or I will crop the image for post post for further post processing in Photoshop. So as you can see this is the before and this is the after. So thank you guys for watching my YouTube channel and thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope it helped a couple of people out there who wanted to know about using Capture One for post processing and I would like to say as as the best post processing um, software ever so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification button like you're seeing right now happening there on your screen and until the next video i'll see you guys bye